So hey guys, welcome to my introductory video of my latest bicycle purchase. So this is a 2014 Salsa Fargo 2. Uh, it's what they, I guess they kind of call these days an ad adventure bike. So it's kind of a hybrid in a way. So uh, it was time to, my true mountain bike, I guess, is my Cannondale F4000 F SL. I purchased back in, I think in 2007 and it's starting to reach the end of its life. Uh, it was a top of the line bicycle and now coming time to replace parts on it uh, to replace it with the same quality parts you know the prices here in Canada are just outrageous so I've kind of uh, taken my Cannondale and converted it more into a uh, urban assault commuter bike and now any real mountain biking that I'm gonna do this summer I now have my Surly Moonlander fat bike and there's a trail system just about a 15 minute ride from here that's rooty, rocky, that's basically great for a fat bike. So my fat bike will be my actual mountain bike for this year. But the majority of riding that I do and what I enjoy the most uh, is gravel roads. Uh, I live in an isolated city and uh, we have a lot of awesome gravel roads. I live in a hilly area. We've got big climbs, big downhills. Um, and I've been using my Yeti, my Yeti Arc X cyclocross bike. I got the fattest tires that I could find currently, some 40 ml, mm uh, uh, Clement tires. And yeah, you can ride most of those, the roads. Um, you can do them, but on the downhills, you can't take the downhills full bore. Uh, some of the climbs are, are really, really tough, even with the 40 mil tires. The other issue that comes up is gearing. Uh, I could change the gearing on my Yeti to make it more able to handle those kinds of crazy gravel climbs, but then it would compromise it as a road bike. So my Yeti has now essentially become my road bike. Uh, this bike, as you can see, it has, uh, drop bars but if you were to see them in person um, they're not a regular drop bar they flare out sideways it's actually a drop bar that salsa says they designed for off-road riding uh, so the geometry of this bike has been designed to use these drop bars although everything else about it is essentially a mountain bike so these are 29er wheels this will be my first 29er it uses 2.25 inch tires that come with its stock but it'll fit I think up to 2.3 or 2.4 inch tires um, the clearance on the fork is massive so there's room here for huge tires you could probably even run uh, the Krampus uh, wheel set up front if you, if you wanted to uh, in the back there's still like I said so these are 2.2 inch tires and there is still clearance back here to run a even fatter tire. So it's a Cromoli tube set. I believe it's the same tube set they use on their El Mariachi uh, models. The front fork is carbon fiber. Uh, it's incredibly beefy. I don't know if the video shows how beefy and how thick and overbuilt this whole area here is and how, how wide it is here. Uh, when I ride, been riding it, people uh, notice the front end they stare at it probably because initially the clearance they see the huge amount of clearance and then how beefy the front end is it's a real attention getter it has uh, Celsius alternator dropouts so basically right now it's set up as a geared bike but you can change it up if you if you want to run it as a single speed um, it comes with a thud buster seat post which initially I wasn't sure I was going to keep but because it's a heavier than a, you know, a nice high-end lightweight seat post. Uh, but when I ride it, I don't really notice it. So I'm going to keep it. Um, it's only going to benefit you on uh, longer rides. At the end of your rides, uh, you won't be cringing over every bump. Um, so it's a mountain bike drivetrain. Uh, X5? Yeah, X5 rear derailleur. Um, it's an 1136 10-speed cassette. They're BB7 uh, cable actuated disc brakes. 
Uh, it uses the SRAM Apex double tap shifters and yeah, they work, but I have to admit I'm not a huge fan of uh, the double tap setup, but um, shifters like this are so expensive, I, I doubt I'm going to end up changing them. I'll just end up getting used to them. Um, up front, it uses a 15 millimeter through axle. So to take the front wheel off, you have to actually entirely unscrew this and pull out the axle to get the front wheel off. Um, I guess it's all about rigidity for stiffness, for steering precision. Uh, and I guess for bra braking performance, the wheel set is the stands, no tubes, uh, ZTRs. These are their original equipment wheel set that they offer, but it did come with the, uh, the yellow rim strip, tubeless rim strip. So all I'll need to do if I want to go tubeless is buy a valve and actual, uh, tubeless tires. Not sure if I'm going to end up going that route. Um, yeah, it uses a full on mountain bike cassette in the back and 1136 like i had mentioned but the gearing up front is uh set up a little more for gravel roads fire roads so it uses a uh, 42 tooth big ring uh, and then a 28 small which is definitely bigger than you're going to see on a, a full-on off-road 29er i think the el mariachi salsas they have i think like a 38 or 39 outer ring so it's designed for high-speed cruising and the bike is great at that it uh, cruises really really well it was my first experience with a 29er mountain bike wheel set um, some of the things I do notice my Cannondale you know it's an absolute it was top of the line full-on 21 pound uh, hardtail back in uh, 2006 and the wheel set on that is really lightweight it's super snappy when it comes to accelerating, especially stomping on it uphill. Uh, this bike is noticeably less snappy because it's a larger diameter, heavier wheel, heavier tires. But once you get this bike up to speed, it cruises really well. It's really fast downhill. Um, so I've been enjoying, enjoying the bike downhill. So the bar setup, uh, I don't know if you can tell from this angle that the, the bars flare out and they're at an unusual angle and they've actually been designed to ride off-road in, in the drop position. Um, but I'm trying to figure out the riding position right now and when I have the drops set up in a position that I would mountain bike in, I find the hoods are really, really high. And the hoods are where I spend most of my time and uh, initially the hoods were way too high and it feels completely odd, especially out of the saddle. So right now we're in that in between, in between season, between winter and late spring, early summer. There won't be any real mountain biking going on here for a while because conditions are wet and sloppy. Um, I went out on my motorbike on Friday. We, we went out of town, a little ways outside of town, just on the edge of town essentially, and tried to do a little bit of off-roading. It's still all snow in the woods, so it'll be a while. Uh, so... Right now the steer tube on this is not cut so I will probably take a little bit off but I will leave it that I have some adjustment. So right now when I'm mostly riding it on gravel roads, roads, I will leave it in the position it's at and I am curious to try it as an off-road bike to see to see what it's like and then on those days I'll just raise it up about a centimeter to make it more comfortable uh, to ride in the drops. Right now it, the riding position is more upright than a road bike but the, the drops is definitely a little more uh, aerodynamic position right now. Um, what else can I say about it? Yeah, right now the bike is basically completely stock other than for the saddle. It came with a WTB uh, branded saddle. I changed it up for this Cell Italia setup. They just swapped it out for me. And that's kind of the, the traditional classic Cell Italia shape, which almost all my other bikes have. Um, yeah, so introduction video on my new Salsa Fargo 2, the 2014 model year. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.